Okay. So this practice, again, you will need two blocks. Um, we will be practicing focus during this practice. So I'm going to be cueing a lot of what's called a drishti in yoga, which is your focus on one thing, which is important for in yoga, um, especially if you're doing any kind of balancing, which we'll be going into warrior three, we'll be going into standing half moon, which is why I had you guys grab your blocks. And what's really important for balancing, especially when you're balancing on one leg, is focusing on one point. And when you do that, you maintain your balance better. And so yoga teaches us to practice focus. That is what, if you go through and read the yoga sutras and all of the steps to yoga, um, actually one of the limbs or one of the practices of yoga aside from the asana and the breathing which is what we do in class is focus is you're focusing on one thing so in my practice I meditate to focusing on a candle flame in your yoga practice you're looking and focusing on one thing in order to balance and in order to stay present and so that is what we're going to be focusing on in this practice is focusing and when you stay focused on one point you stay present in the moment and that's what yoga is all about okay so i want you to think and i'll tell you and i'll cue you where to focus your gaze during each of these poses or for most of them but in order to come back to this present moment i want you to think about a mantra and it could be a one word mantra Sometimes I just like to say focus. I just have to remind myself focus. It's just that one word that I keep repeating to myself when I find that I've kind of wandered. My mind has wandered or my gaze has wandered. Like I'm in a pose and I'm like kind of looking around. Just notice what you do when I'm trying to get you to focus. I think you'll notice whether or not you're focusing or not in your practice. So again, come to a mantra. It can be focus. It can be, I am here. It can be here. Whatever brings you back to this present moment to focus on one thing. I want you to think about that mantra. Okay. So whatever word or phrase you have in your head will work. Whatever works for you is fine. And I will say that I have adapted and actually taking, taken all of this practice from Ashley Zuberry. She's one of my mentors. Um, so I will be making a few subtle changes and adding some things, but this mainly came from her. But I think it's a really, really great practice in order to practice focus, which is why I um, am kind of re-emulating it here. All right, so we're going to get started here in child's pose. And as you're settling into child's pose, um, I want you to know that I am going to be cueing plank in the chaturangas, which all of you guys have done. You know what that looks like. I will not be doing plank. I will be modifying a lot because I have low back pain and plank just makes it worse. So I'm not going to be doing plank, but you absolutely do plank. You can do the full expression of the push up or not. Maybe you don't do the chaturanga at all and you just come right into downward facing dog. I'm trying to listen to my body and do what works best in my body right now. I need to heal my low back, but please just know you don't have to do what I'm doing. If you want to do the full expression, by all means, this is your practice. You do what you want to do, okay? So go ahead and settle down into child's pose. So if you look up and I'm doing something different than what I'm cueing, that is why. I'm trying to modify. So go ahead and sink all the way down into your child's pose. Knees are wide if that's comfortable in your body. If it feels good to melt your forehead all the way down to the mat, please do so. If not, always grab a block. You have your blocks there for support if you need them. And just let your whole body just melt into the mat here. If it feels good in your neck, to massage the middle of your forehead, the space between your eyebrows by rocking your head back and forth. You might try that. And then I really want you to focus on how you feel. Maybe take that full body scan if that feels good in your body or if that is effective for you to start 
from the very tips of your fingers and scan all the way down to your toes. Just noticing any sensations that you're feeling. Notice how you feel physically, emotionally, mentally, energetically. Always staying focused and present in this moment because this moment is all we have. And it's so easy to get distracted. And then I want you to begin to notice your breath. And take a great big deep inhale through your nose, fill up your belly, your ribs, your chest, fill up the back body, all the way up to the top of your head, tips of your fingers. And then exhale, send it all the way out of your chest, out of, out of the front body. Inhale, fill all the way up, starting from the bottoms of the feet, fill all the way up to the tips of the fingers. And then as you exhale out of your mouth, like steam, blow the breath out of the front body. Last time here, inhale, fill up through the bottoms of the feet, fill up knees, hips, stomach, shoulders, head, fingertips, and then exhale like steam, send the breath out the front of the body. And then go ahead and seal your lips and then take these inhales and exhales through the nose, constrict the back of your throat slightly, making audible ocean wave noises with the breath for Ujjayi Pranayama, and come into a rhythm to this breath. And then try to keep this rhythm to the breath for the entire practice. On your next inhale, slowly begin to make your way up into a um, tabletop pose. So shoulders stack over wrists, hips stack over knees. Tuck your toes if you want more support. Nice neutral spine here. Feel your tailbone reach to the back of the room. And then on your inhale, you're going to melt your belly, lift your chin for cow pose. And then exhale, round the spine up and back for cat pose. Inhale, melt the belly, lift the chin for cat. Exhale, round your spine up and back for cow, for cat pose. Sorry, I got them mixed up. You know what it is. Inhale for cow pose. Exhale for cat pose. And then from here, just take any movement in your body that feels good. Maybe you take big barrel rolls. Maybe you stretch out your sides by wagging the tail. Maybe you circle your shoulders over your wrist. Again, whatever you need here, just take any organic movement that feels good in this shape. Stay connected with your breath. And then go ahead and bring your spine back to neutral. And here's where I'm going to introduce your drishti or your focus. So I want you to focus on a point that is maybe a few, several inches, maybe about five inches or so um, in front of your fingertips. So your gaze is straight down. Your, your um, cervical spine is long. So I'm just looking straight down. And if you have something, like sometimes I'll just grab like, I don't know, the last time I grabbed like a piece of dog hair or a clump of dog hair and put it there for my drishti. Or like if you have something that you can put in front of you so that you can keep looking back at the same point, then if that helps you, that helps me, um, then you can go ahead and do that. But this is the focus. This is one point that I'm going to keep referring back to. So... You're going to focus on this, this focal point. And then from here, we're going to come into a bird dog. So staying with your focus on this point on the mat, you're going to inhale, reach the right arm out long in front of you. Like you're going to shake somebody's hand and reach the left leg out behind you. So all of the weight is evenly distributed in your left hand and in your right knee. And your core is really engaged here. So belly button to spine, really engage the core, hug the ribs in and hold here. 
your left glute muscle is activating your right shoulder. This is going to feel a little spicy. You're going to start building some heat here. Stay focused on that one point. On the next exhale, lower the hand, lower the knee. Now press all of your weight into your right hand and into your left knee. On the inhale, lift your left arm up, left fingertips forward, and then reach the right leg back and hold. Again, engage the entire core here. Stay with that focus on the ground. So really engaged here. Breathe into it, feel the muscles working. Good, exhale, lower the hand, lower the knee. Tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, downward dog. Now your drishti, your focus is gonna shift to a point between your thighs. So now you're letting your head hang and you're looking behind you. Maybe you look behind your thighs. Maybe you just look to the edge of your mat. That's okay too. But just at a point that's behind you. So we'll come back here too. Whenever we come into downward facing dog or a forward fold, we're going to come to this fixed point behind us. And so in this downward dog, you're welcome to pedal out your feet. Take any movement here that feels good, but keep your drishti, keep your focus on that one point. Letting the head hang, pressing your hands into the mat, pressing the fingertips into the mat like you're gripping the mat with your hands, sending your tailbone up and back, bending your knees, maybe lifting your heels. Stay here. Good, and then on the inhale, I want you to roll your body forward into a full expression of plank. I'm coming down into tabletop, but you can go into plank. You can always lower your knees and come into a modified plank. And that drishti is gonna be the same, that same point when you were in tabletop when we just did bird dog, that's the same focus that you're gonna have in your plank pose. One full cycle of breath here, inhale. Exhale, let it go. Inhale again, send your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Now the drishti focuses to that point behind you that you fixed in the last downward dog. And then on your next inhale, you're gonna shift your gaze up to that point at the top of your mat. And then you're just gonna walk your feet up to your hands, come into a forward fold. And then now you're going to shift your focus to that point behind you, like we, like you had in downward dog. And from here, you're going to let your head hang. You're going to let your arms hang. You can clasp your elbows. You can clasp your fingertips behind your head. You can have your knees bent here. You can sway from side to side. You can sway forward and back. Good. From here, let your fingertips fall. Bend your knees. And on the next inhale, come all the way up to stand. Reach the arms above your head. Now you're going to focus on the horizon line, something right in front of your face, right in front of your eyes. Reach all the way up. Maybe press the hips forward. Come into a slight back bend, just a slight one. And then exhale. Bring the palms to your heart. Come into Tadasana, Mountain Pose. So all four corners of my feet are pressed into the mat. I'm still focused on that drishti, that one point right at the horizon line. Inhale, lift the arms back up to the sky. Exhale, bring the palms through the heart and then forward fold. Focus on that gaze behind you, maybe the edge of the mat. And then inhale, halfway lift. The drishti now is right underneath my nose like it was in plank and in tabletop. Exhale, fold forward, plant your hands. And then inhale, step back, high plank. Focus is in the same spot. 
Exhale, lower halfway down. Inhale for upward dog. And then exhale, tuck the toes, lift your hips, downward facing dog. Again, modify this as you need to. I'm not going to go through it. Good. Now from here, inhale, bend your knees, look forward to that one point at the top of the mat. And then exhale, come into a forward fold. You can step or hop. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold forward. And then inhale, sweep the arms all the way up to the sky. Come into that horizon point, focus point that you, that you uh, noticed the last time. And then exhale, bring the palms through the heart, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Focus is at the top of the mat. Exhale, lower, plant the hands. Inhale, step back, high plank. Keep that drishti. Exhale, lower, halfway down. Inhale, shift forward for upward dog. Exhale, tuck your toes, lift your hips up and back, downward dog. Full cycle of breath here. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. Inhale, bend your knees. Look at that point at the top of your mat. On the exhale, you're going to walk or step your feet up to your hands, forward fold. Gaze is behind you. Inhale, halfway lift. Gaze is in front of you. Exhale, lower. Inhale, root to rise. Sweep the arms all the way up to the sky. Focus at the horizon line. And then exhale, palms through your heart, forward fold. Focus the, at the back of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Focus right below you. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale for upward facing dog. Exhale, tuck your toes, lift your hips, downward facing dog. Take a full cycle of breath here. Inhale. Exhale, let it go. Good. Inhale, bend your knees, lift your heels, look forward to that point, and then walk, step, or hop to the top of your mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Lower your fingertips down and step your left foot to the back of the mat behind you. From here, lower that back knee down. Keep the left hand planted onto the mat. And then inhale, twist your right arm up to the sky. Now, when you do this, I want you to focus on a point in the, um, on the ceiling. That's going to be your drishti whenever you look up or your focal point whenever you look up. That's what you're gonna look at whenever when we come back into the side twist or the side poses. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, look down at the, the drishti point on your mat, plant the right hand, and then you're gonna step back up to a forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. And then exhale, fold, reach your right foot to the back of the mat, lower the back knee down. Now my drishti is at that point on my mat above my fingertips. On the inhale, I'm gonna lift my left arm up and look up at the ceiling at that same focal point as what I looked at on the other side. So right hand is really pressing into the mat, left arm is reaching, reaching straight up to the sky. Stay with your breath here. And then exhale, lower that left hand back down to the mat, lower the gaze down to that drishti, and then step up with the right foot, come into a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, plant your hands. Inhale, step back into high plank, and then hold here, keeping your gaze down. Notice how long your cervical spine, notice how long your neck can be here when you're looking down at your mat. And then if you want to take a chaturanga here, you're welcome to. So exhale on the way down, inhale for upward dog, exhale for downward dog, or just meet me in downward dog. Take a full cycle of breath here. Inhale, the gaze is at the back of the mat now. Remember that drishti back there. And then inhale your right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. 
and then exhale, step your right foot to the front of the mat. Dial the back foot down so that it's parallel to the back of your mat and inhale, paint your arms across the sky. Come into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. All right, so your gaze in warrior two is straight forward off of your right middle finger. So it's at the horizon line, but it's forward along that right arm. Now your feet are on one track. So my front foot is bisecting the arch of the heel of the back foot. I'm pressing the knife edge of my left foot into the ground. Actually, I'm, place, I'm planting all of my, my all, all two feet into the ground and ripping the mat in half. Sink a little deeper into that right leg. And then engage your shoulders onto your spine. Keep that focal point. Sink a little deeper into that right leg. Stay there on the inhale, sweep the right arm up and back, reverse warrior. Get a nice long stretch in the right side body here. But keep the legs strong. My left hand can come down my leg. My drishti is again gonna be above me like it was in the twist that we did just a few poses ago. When we reach the arm up to the sky, it's gonna be that same focal point that we're gonna focus on. Good, stay for the inhale. Exhale, keep the legs exactly where they are. Come into extended side angle. And for this one, your drishti is gonna be right in front of your eyes. So focus on something maybe on the wall. If you want it to be a little more challenging, you can even reach the left arm up and look up. So the way these poses work is if you're looking down, you'll have more balance. And if you wanna keep challenging yourself, you're gonna keep lifting your gaze up and up and up. Cause obviously if you're looking down, you can see what your body is doing. And so you can, you can, have, you can have better balance. But if you start, it's like closing your eyes and balancing, it's way harder to do that. So once you divert your eyes from your body, it's harder. Good. On the next inhale, strong legs come back into warrior two. That focal point is coming off of your right middle finger. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, cartwheel your arms down, plant your hands. Inhale, step back into plank pose, move through your chaturanga or just meet me in downward facing dog. Again, as you're, downward, as you're in your downward dog, the drishti is in that spot behind you. Inhale your left leg up to the sky. Exhale, shift your gaze to the top of your mat. Step your foot up. Dial your back foot down so that it's parallel to the back of the mat and then inhale, paint your arms across the sky, warrior two. Drishti is coming off of the left middle finger now. So warriors are really cool. They're really, really strong poses. Imagine in this warrior that you have a bow and arrow and that is where you're looking. You're drawing your bow back and you're looking towards that arrow, where the arrow is going. That is what, where you're looking in warrior two. Sink deep in to the legs here. Legs are strong. You're pushing down and out like you're ripping your mat in half. The stronger and the more you engage your legs in these poses, also the better balance you're gonna have. Engage the shoulders onto the back of the spine. Shoulders straight over hips. Sink a little deeper into that front knee. On the next inhale, reverse your warrior. Your gaze goes up to that focal point on the ceiling. And then focus on also feel and notice the stretch in the left side body. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, begin to uh, come forward into extended side angle. So legs are exact, stay exactly the same. Drishti comes either straight ahead of you, straight in front of your eyes on the wall. Or if you need to look down for more balance, or if you want to look back up to the sky for more of a challenge.
Good. Inhale, make your way back up into warrior two. Good. Stay for the inhale. Keep your focus. And then exhale, cartwheel your hands down. Inhale, step back, high plank, move through your chaturanga, or, and meet me in downward facing dog. And then from here, lower down onto your knees. Come into child's pose, and I just want you to give your eyes and your mind a break for a second. So I've been trying to get you to focus your eyes on something after every move, after every transition that we take. So just notice what that's like. Notice what that's been like. If you have any feelings coming up, Good, on the next inhale, slowly make your way up into a tabletop pose. And then come up onto your knees and um, I'm gonna shift to the side. So uh, bring yourself to, um, so that you're facing the side of your mat, the long side. And you're gonna bring your left leg out long. So my entire foot is on my mat and my, the bottom of, of my uh, left foot is in line with my right knee, okay? So they're on one track here. And then you're gonna focus your gaze on something in front of you for this, for now. And then on the inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. Exhale, lower the left hand down onto the left knee and reach that right arm up above your head. Get that nice stretch in the right side body and breathe into that right lung. So notice since you're kind of crunched up on the left side, it might be harder to take a full breath on that side. So send that breath over to the right side. Really open up that side of the body with your breath. Maybe every time you inhale, you get a little bit longer, still focusing on that drishti. And every time you exhale, you maybe sink a little deeper into the pose. This is called gate pose. Good. Inhale, reach all the way up. Now exhale, plant your right hand down in line with that right knee. Lift the left arm up to the sky. Now at this point, you can look up to the drishti on the ceiling that we've been looking at. So my right hand is right underneath my right shoulder. Now I'm getting a, a stretch in the opposite side in the left side of the body this time. It's just in a slightly different shape. And now you have the option to stay here or really shift a lot of your weight into that right hand, maybe lift up that left leg. This is gonna require some glute activation, outer hip. But if you'll notice, we're gonna come into half moon later standing on our, on our foot, on one leg. This is the same exact pose, except we're on our knee and on our hand. So I'm building you up and warming you up for that big pose for the more challenging balancing posture. Good. Go ahead and look down at your right hand, lower that right left foot down, and then inhale, come up, use the core to lift your way up, arms up to the sky. Bring your palms down to your heart on the exhale. Now I want you to switch legs. So the right leg comes out long. We're gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. So the whole top of the foot is down, or bottom of the foot is down. Really press into that foot. That's also gonna help you as well. Foot in line with the knee. Inhale, reach the arms up to the sky. And then exhale, bring that right arm down to the right leg. Come into gate pose. Come into that nice stretch. On the left side of the body this time, your gaze is right in front of you at that fixed point. So as I was saying before, one of the limbs of yoga, there are eight limbs. The asana and the breath are just two of them. One of them is called dharana, and it is when you focus your attention on one object or point. And you keep doing this every single day. 
And this is what builds your focus. This is what builds your ability to be present and to not be distracted by other objects. Inhale, raise both arms up to the sky. Keep the gaze forward. Exhale, lower the left hand down to the ground and then shift your gaze up to the ceiling. The left arm hand is right underneath the shoulder. You're still pressing your right foot down into the mat. And if it doesn't feel good on your neck to look up, you can always look down at your uh, left hand or you can always look right in front of you at the horizon line where your eyes are. But try to make these points only be one point. So you're not looking at a different thing every single time unless you're switching points. Now, option to stay here or bring the weight into that left uh, hand and then lift up the right leg this time. Again, this is a modified half moon pose. It's still pretty challenging because we're using our oblique muscles. It's still a lot of balancing work here. So you can press that left top of the foot into the mat. Good, exhale, lower that right foot down. Use your uh, oblique muscles, your core, Press into that foot and lift up, reach the arms up, good. Exhale, bring your palms down to your heart. And then we're gonna shift floor, back forward on our mat and then come back into a downward facing dog. So slowly transition, your focus is now behind you. Good, inhale your right leg up to the sky. Exhale, shift your gaze forward, step the foot to the front, and then inhale, reach the arms up to the sky for crescent lunge. Now our gaze is at that horizon line again. We've been here before. We're just gonna keep coming back to these points of focus. So your left hip comes forward, right hip goes back. And this is a pose where it is harder to keep balance here. So you really have to make your legs strong. Make, your, make sure that your quads, your glutes, your feet are really engaged here and your feet are on two separate tracks. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, I want you to hinge forward. Keep your spine flat. Reach the fingertips behind you. Come into an airplane. So I'm still, my legs are still in high lunge. Now I'm just trying to hover my chest above my leg. And then your drishti, your focus, is on that same point at the mat, on the, the top of the mat when um, you were in plank pose. On the inhale, reach the arms straight back up. Come back into full crescent. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, begin to come back into that airplane, reach the arms back, bend deeper into that front leg, bring all of the weight into the front leg, try to lift up the back leg, come into warrior three. Again, your focus is straight down on that same drishti we've been looking at on the mat. So neck and head are in line with your spine. Good, stay for the inhale. Exhale, begin to bend into that right knee, reach the left toes to the back of the mat, land the toes, come back up into crescent lunge. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, shift your way into warrior two. So dial the back foot down parallel to the back of your mat. Now we're in warrior two, we've been here before. Gaze is coming off of the right middle finger now. On the next inhale, reverse your warrior. Gaze goes up to that point on the ceiling. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, keep the legs the same. Reach into extended side angle. 
Now your extended side angle, your focus is right, at, right in front of your face or at the point at the wall. Now from here is when we're gonna come into half moon. So you might wanna grab a block here and you can bring it up, bring it up on its highest setting, place the block about a foot or so in front um, of your right foot and then begin to bring all of your weight into your right leg. You might can bring your left toes up until you've lifted that left leg up. So remember that modified half moon pose that we did on our knee. You're doing the same exact thing here, except now you're on your foot and you're on your hand. So it's the same exact thing. Now, this is a pose where if you're really wobbly, you can keep your gaze down at the drishti on the mat. If it's more comfortable for you to look at the point on the wall, and what's gonna be the most challenging is to bring your gaze up to the ceiling. You'll get even more wobbly, and that's okay. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, bend into that right leg, land the left foot back down, come into warrior two, nice job. On the next inhale, reverse, gaze goes up to the sky. And then on the next exhale, cartwheel your hands down, step back into plank so your gaze shifts down to the mat and then move through your chaturanga, meet me in downward dog. We've got the last side to do here. So take a couple breaths in downward facing dog. Again, your drishti is at that spot behind you, maybe the, the edge of the back of your mat, maybe somewhere between your legs on the wall. And then inhale your left leg up to the sky. Adjust your drishti up to the top of the mat, that same focal point. And then exhale, step the left foot between the hands. Inhale, rise, gaze goes to the horizon. Again, strong legs here. So try to shift forward from your back toes, engage your right glute and press your right hip forward, left hip back to square the hips to the front of the room. Sink a little deeper into the front knee. Good, stay for the inhale. Exhale, begin to hinge forward, reach your fingertips back. Gaze goes down to that point a few inches above your toes now, the same point on the mat that we've been looking at. Inhale, lift the arms back up, crescent lunge. Gaze goes back to the horizon. So we've only got like five points that we're looking at through this whole practice. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, hinge forward, reach the fingertips back, bring all the weight into the left leg, shift into warrior three with airplane arms. Again, your drishti, your focus is down at that point on the mat. Slight bend in the left knee. Stay with your breath. Maybe come back to your mantra. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, bend into that left knee, reach the right toes to the back of the mat, come back into crescent lunge like nothing happened, nice and steady. Gaze is at the horizon again. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, shift your way into warrior two, dial that back foot down. Gaze is going off of the left middle finger now, like you're drawing back that bow and arrow. You're really honed in on what on your target. On the next inhale, reverse your warrior. Gaze drishti goes up to the ceiling at that one point that you've already picked out. On the exhale, gaze goes back forward, come into extended side angle. If you need to grab a block for this other side, go ahead and do so. Because from here, we're going right into half moon. So go ahead and look down at your block. Grab the block if you need it. Plant the block. Now when you plant your block, I don't want it in line with your foot. 
that's just going to be harder to balance. It's going to be to the left of that foot. Okay. And then you're going to bring your, all of your weight into your left leg, maybe walk the right toes up and then lift up the left leg. So the block should be right underneath your left shoulder, but not in line with the foot. You want to stack your sh one shoulder on top of the other, one hip on top of the other. Again, that same shape that we took when we were on our hand and, hand and knee. Focus on that one point. And notice how much better you can balance when you focus on one point and you breathe. Again, to make it easier, look down to the drishti on the mat or in front of you to um, in line with your eyes or all the way up to the sky. That's going to be, whew, almost lost my balance there looking up. Good, stay for the inhale. Exhale, bend into that left knee, reach that right leg to the back of the mat, come back into warrior two. Gaze is over the left middle finger. The next inhale, we're gonna come into reverse warrior. Gaze looks up now. Stay for the inhale. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down, plant the hands. Come back down to your drishti on the mat. Step back into plank. Move through your chaturanga. Meet me in downward facing dog. Good. Lower all the way down to your knees. And then we're going to come into hero's pose. So my knees are bent and I'm sitting on my heels. If this is as far as you wanna go with your hands just resting on your legs and a tall spine, please feel free to stay here. You wanna take this a little bit further. You can begin to snuggle your butt in between your, your um, feet and your shins. Sometimes I have to take like the meaty portion of my calf and like move it to the side to settle in even more. Now, if you want something under your butt, like a block or a pillow for more support, you're welcome to do this. This pose is actually really intense on the knees. So please listen to your body. Don't force anything. Go meet yourself where you are. Now, if this is enough for you, you can stay here. This is already pretty intense on my knees and I haven't even leaned back yet. Otherwise, you can begin to plant your hands and then slowly, if you want to, and you're able to keep going back further and further, you can do that. Maybe all the way to your elbows, maybe all the way onto your spine. I cannot go that far. If you want to make this a quad stretch too, you're always welcome to lift your hips up and press your hips up and forward to get a better quad stretch. I, I love this pose. and it's less intense on the knees. So wherever you are, wherever you want to breathe and get space, modify. It's always good to know the proper alignment of the poses, but as long as you know those and you want to come into something a little bit different and change it a little bit to make it more comfortable in your body, always, always do that. You don't have to ever stick to these rigid quote unquote rules, I guess, for what the poses should look like. This is a practice in getting to know your body and doing what's best for your body. It doesn't have to be the same. It's not going to be the same for everybody. And here you're not really focusing on anything in particular, if you don't want to, or if you want to, you're welcome to. Kind of just depends on where you are in the pose. Slowly begin to make your way back up and slowly shift back into tabletop. And from here, bring your right foot up to the right edge of your mat by your right hand. We're coming into runner's lunge. So I like to like scoot my left knee back to really get that into the left hip flexor. So, so change this around, adjust it so that this feels good in your body. 
So my right toes are kind of pointed out to the right. I'm getting this nice opening in my right hip. And again, do what feels good in your body. You can stay up on your hands if you want to lower down onto your elbows. And your drishti here can, again, be straight down on the mat. You can also let your head kind of hang so that you're looking behind you or to the back of your mat if you want to let your head hang. Totally up to you what feels the best in your body. Good, go ahead and make your way back to tabletop pose. No rush there. Now we're just gonna come back into the same pose on the other side. So bring your left leg to the left edge of your mat. Scoot your right knee back, same runner's lunge as we did on the other side. If it looks a little bit different on this side, that's okay. Your, your um, sides are not always the same. And then of course from here, you can stay up on your hands. You can come all the way down onto your elbows. Again, your focus can be down on the mat right below your nose, or you can let your head hang and look at something behind you. And I want you to notice, we've done a lot of focus in this practice. I want you to notice how it's different. What did you notice in this practice as I had you focus on certain things during the entire practice? Maybe it was challenging. Maybe you noticed that you don't normally do that in practice. Maybe it helped, maybe you didn't like it at all. Just notice whatever comes up for you. Good. From here, go ahead and make your way back up into tabletop. Maybe take a couple few cat cows here or any movement that feels good in your body. Again, drishti at the top of your mat, a few inches in front of above your fingertips. And then go ahead and sit all the way back onto your heels. Come into a seat, scoot to the middle of your mat and then roll yourself all the way down onto your back. We're gonna come into bridge pose here. So scoot the heels up by the glutes, shoulders plant down on the spine into the mat, and then inhale, lift the hips up into bridge pose. You're welcome to clasp your hands underneath your butt if you want, and shimmy your shoulders together if you want more of a arm, shoulder, chest stretch here or you can just stay in your simple bridge pose. Good, exhale, lower all the way down. Walk your feet out to the edges of your mat and just windshield wipe your legs from side to side dropping the knees from side to side. Then go ahead and hug both knees into your chest. You can circle out the knees, make circles with the knees, massage the low spine. And then bring the right knee into your chest, extend your left leg out long. You can hug that right knee up into the right shoulder. Bring some compression to the right side of the body. And then when you're ready, you can guide that knee across your body, extend your right arm out long, come into a supine twist. As always, you can look straight up. You can look towards your right arm if you want more of a neck stretch here. And adjust your hips so that this feels good in your body so that you can get a nice spinal twist here. Good. 
Good. Inhale, make your way back through center. Bring the left knee into your chest this time. Extend the right leg out long. Hug that left knee up into your left armpit. Bring some compression into the left side of the torso. If you want to circle out the knee here, you can do that. And then when you're ready, you can guide that knee across your body. Extend your left arm out long. Adjust to make this supine twist feel good in your body. Look straight up to the sky or let the neck, the gaze drop over to the left. Inhale, make your way back through center, hug both knees into your chest, grab for the outsides of your feet for happy baby. This is gonna be our last pose before we come into our Shavasana. So if there's another shape that you prefer to take, you can go ahead and spend some, some breath there. And then whenever you're ready, you can slowly begin to make your way into your Shavasana. Whatever that looks like for you, you can use props, you can use the wall, you can use a couch. Just let your mind rest, let your eyes rest, let your body rest. It was a lot of energy, a lot of work focusing and balancing. So give your body this grace, give your body this, this nice rest here. Of course, you're welcome to stay in Shavasana for as long as you'd like, or begin to deepen your breath and bring movement into your body. Of course, don't rush this part. We have plenty of time. Eventually, you will come up into a seat. So however you want to get there by rolling off maybe onto one side, coming up into a comfortable seat or staying in Shavasana, it's totally up to you. Bring your palms into your heart. Feel your thumbs against your heart. Feel your heart beat. Inhale, fill all the way up to the top and hold. Expand your ribs, your chest, your back body, your side body, your front body, your shoulders, your neck. Sip in a little bit more breath. Exhale, let it all go. You guys, thank you so much for practicing with me. It's a pleasure, happy to see all your faces, and from my heart to yours, namaste.